Okay, so before we go into implications, one small thing that we need to talk about. Uh, so how does expectation affect consumption in two ways one uh, directly uh, through human wealth okay so when we make this assumption that uh, you are going to be earning 600,000 every year and there is going to be a 5% increment every year. This is expectation. We are making a projection of what might happen. And based on this projection that we make of our future income, we are going to decide how much we consume today. So this is a direct impact of expectation on consumption. So directly. And second is, of course, indirectly. through non-human wealth and this is something we have talked about in chapter 14. <clears throat> we looked at how valuation of assets, financial assets uh, and even physical assets can vary depending on what we expect interest rates to be in chapter 14. If interest rates went up uh, the present value of assets would fall. And if interest rates went down, the opposite would be happening. So this is how expectation is going to affect our consumption, directly through human will and indirectly through non-human will, which is what we have covered in chapter 14. So now finally, we can talk about implications. And this is important, very simple, almost intuitive. You all know this already, I think, uh, but uh, you know, just something to formally talk about. Number one is consumption reacts inelastically to income. What does that mean? If Today, my income increased by 100. I am not going to increase my consumption by 100. Okay, we had already seen that in ECO 207 right here. See, even if YD was increasing by 100, C would not increase by 100 because C1 right here. If C1 is 0 0.8, a rise of 100 in YD would mean that C increased by 80. So C consumption changes inelastically with income. And this is because we do not solely focus or we do not solely relate current consumption with current income, but how much we consume is related to our lifetime income or at least income in the coming uh, foreseeable future so even if income were to increase we will not increase consumption by the exact same amount and the opposite is also true if income were to decrease we would not want to decrease consumption by the same amount another way of saying this is that we want to smooth our consumption. What that means is that even though income may go through drastic rise and fall, we want to smooth out how much we consume. That is what we sort of did here as well, right? We smoothed out, I mean, there was changes over our lifetime in how much we were earning and how much to all of that other things, but we smoothed out our consumption. This is the amount that we can spend every single month. So that is something we want to do. So th this is an important relationship to keep in mind. And the second one is that consumption 
might change even if income does not how might that be once again we go back to expectation if our expectation of the future is very good we expect that the economy will start to do really well our income will go up in the future or prices will go down in the future whatever it may be even without our income changing we may begin to consume more the opposite is also true if our uh, projection of the future expectation of the future is not very good then even if our income does not change we may start to consume less because we expect that you know hard times are coming in the future and we better save up for the future so these two implications are important okay and they both relate to expectation uh, about how much we expect to be earning in the future uh, so this was the part about consumption uh, not that difficult in fact quite simple if i may add so myself hopefully you've all been able to follow through in the next video we will be talking about how expectation affects our investment decisions